See, this is, a, this is the problem. Remember right at the beginning, I always say this. What are the two influences on the soul? Truth and error. Right? How do they in, in, enter you? They enter you through your... So every experience creates emotions and desires and passions in you, right? Is that not right? Every experience. Now, if I choose to have experiences that cause my soul harm, I am going to feel the pain of that harm. If I choose experiences that release pain from my soul, then that's going to be beneficial. So the truth is, yes, this life is all about experiences. It's all about you experiencing this life. Everything that you experience will enter your soul. All of it will enter your soul. But if it's out of harmony with love from God's perspective, in other words, if it's out of harmony with the truth about love, it is going to hurt you. Guaranteed. Every time. And that's the penalty, the hurt. The hurt is the penalty for doing it outside of the truth about love. Now, we can use every single thing that happens to us as a way of accessing the truth about love, or we can use it as accessing or avoiding the truth about love. So I can actually physically go and have sex with someone in total avoidance of the underlying emotions that cause me to do so. Or I can go and have sex with someone in full knowledge of the truth about how I'm feeling about that person. One of those experiences is going to cause me pain, the other one is going to cause me pleasure at the soul level. So there is no problem with you experiencing, but the problem comes when you begin to choose to experience things that are not harmonious with love. And most of us have no idea about love. That's why we're here, learning about love, right? Because we don't have any idea about love and we're learning about love, and we're learning about God's way of loving. And any way that we choose out of harmony with God's way of loving is going to cause pain to ourselves. And this includes sex, just as it includes any other interaction that we have with people. So, sorry, you wanted to say something for a while? <laughs> oh, no, just the key is not to go into some sort of beating yourself up about having a sexual encounter, because like he's saying, we're just learning about love and about God and all of those things. If we just stay emotionally open and aware, with the fact that we have the desire in the first place, it's already in our soul, whether we act on it or not. So we just have choices about how we're going to experience that desire, how we're going to release that desire. So I had a point. I think the point is, you know, for so long we've had this set set of morals of you know or the rule book or whatever certain people tell us to practice or not practice but in the end as we develop in love we don't need a rule book anymore because it'll all just come from us naturally um, and different actions they might seem diff the, they might seem to be same actions from the outside but different intentions, like having sex with somebody or having sex with somebody else, it might just seem like sex, but if the intention is to connect on an emotional, a spiritual and a physical level, then that sex is something very different and it's, it can be a love transaction. Um, do you, can you make a point out of everything I just said? <laughs> I didn't say any of them, so then they all just came out at once. That's great, babe. <laughs> Did you understand what you were saying? Did I release anything? Sorry? I didn't cause any injury, but did I release anything in love? What well, do you feel? Yeah. Do, do you feel happy about the encounter? What's your feeling? Did you feel that after you had the sex that you wanted, did you feel that it was actually fulfilling? No, actually it actually was good to see him walk out the door and say goodnight. Okay. So it wasn't based on love, it wasn't fulfilling. So whatever the need was in you that drove you to have the sex, right, it actually wasn't a pure need. It was something to do with an emotional injury. Because if it was a pure need, it would have had been very fulfilling. And you'd want to stay in a relationship with him and you wouldn't be happy that he walked out afterwards. 
Does that make sense? But the fact that you were happy that he walked out afterwards and that you didn't want to have sex with him the next <laughs> a few nights later tends to indicate that it was driven by an emotional injury. So allow yourself to look at what the emotional injury was. What was it? Was it a desire for approval, a desire for to be validated as a woman, a desire to be sexually, um, where, am I, where am I looking for it? To be sexually attractive. Uh, you know, what, what desire drove you to have sex that in the end wasn't fulfilling anyway? And the reason why it wasn't fulfilling is because you didn't deal with the underlying emotion and release the emotion. That's why it's not fulfilling in the end. So the truth is you can go out and have as many sexual encounters as you want. You'll find most of them very, very unattractive in the end unless you deal with the emotional causes as to why you go out and do it. And this is one reason why I decided myself to stay celibate for five years, because what that did was it triggered every single emotion in me of loneliness, feeling empty without a woman in my life, feeling like nobody, would, for five years, nobody touched me. So if you can imagine what that feels like, not to ever be touched for five years. And that triggered up lots of childhood emotions about my, my mother not, not touching me, not hugging me and things like that. Lots of emotions come out in that time. So you could choose, I could have chosen to do the same thing by having relationship after relationship, but the problem is they, that would have been just feeding my addictions. Does, does that make sense? And so, and the other obviously feeling I had was, yes, yeah, sex can be an addiction. In fact, sex can be your biggest addiction. So how many of you have sex because you want touch? You want to be held, you want to be loved, you want to be... These are all addictions. That means you're not loved. You don't feel loved. If you want sex to be loved, then you don't feel loved before you begin. Does that make sense? And, the, and having the sex is just feeding that addiction of making the, the illusion that you're loved when in reality, even after the sex act's finished, you still don't really feel loved and you want to have sex again. Right? To feel loved. Because the feeling of being unloved is within you and until it gets released, it's going to stay in you generating these addictions. So the problem with sex is that it can be very much driven by addictions. Very much driven by addictions. And the law of attraction will bring you these events and show you your addictions. So let the law of attraction do that. Show you and expose you your addictions. If you know you're not in love with the man, you like him, he's nice enough, and you want to have a sex buddy or whatever, for a, right, then look at the addiction. Does that make sense? While you're in that addiction, you're never going to attract your soulmate. You need to look at that addiction. Feel that addiction. Work your way through that addiction. Can you see how, like, a lot of times we're being addicted to something, and this applies not only to sex, but many other addictions that we have, in order to mask the underlying emotion. But sex is a wonderful, immediate way of masking an underlying emotion, right? I'd, mu I'd much rather have sex than have a smoke, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> Not everyone maybe feels that way, but, but honestly, we need to look at why, in both cases, they can be addictions, right? Obviously, smoking is quite obvious that I'm harming my body. It's not always obvious with sex that I'm actually harming myself until after the event, when I actually feel those terrible emotions of, oh, boy, you know, I've done it again, you know, I've entered another relationship that's not satisfying, I've attracted another person who... I've interacted with, I've swapped some energy with, but it hasn't been fulfilling, and so forth. So the key is, is for us to actually deal with the underlying emotional addiction that creates that. I think that was my point. <laughs> 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 that if you recognise your addictions, you can choose to recognise the addiction and resist the addiction and deal with the underlying emotion, which can work in some cases. But in some cases, if you recognise the addiction and you, you just observe and allow yourself to feel your emotions while you're satisfying the addiction, you can also, in the end, the addiction loses its power. Yeah, obviously, I don't agree with Mary, actually. <laughs> no, it does work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good example. 
simple, but... It, uh, yeah, but see, like, the, the way I view it is, if you're going to choose to do something that also causes soul damage to you, then in the end, you're going to be also then paying for the soul damage. And I guess you're damaging someone else's soul. And you're damaging someone else's soul too. So, look, for instance, if I enter a, a, an interaction sexually with another person because of an addiction, but I know there is no love in this interaction, it's just a sexual interaction, then I am damaging my own soul while I'm working through the addiction. You know, no, no, yep, yeah, you're right. Where I think I was thinking more about things like sexual projection and when yeah. people are like entering sort of quasi-sexual interactions, they're not actually having sex, but you, to recognise the sexual interplay that goes on in your everyday life can be quite powerful. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely. So, so in other words, face up to the fact that I'm attracted to five women today, what actually happened, go home and talk to your wife about it, let the emotions come up, and you'll work through lots of issues. Do you know what I mean? Face up the fact that you did have this attraction. But you don't have to act on your attraction. So it's a bit like many of you, as you go through your emotions of anger, will feel like murdering someone. You will. I can guarantee you, you will. Right? Don't do it. <laughs> and if you relate it the same way to the sexual things, many of you will feel like having sex with this person, that person, this person. Right? Don't, you don't have to do it. You can actually look at it, look at the emotions that are going on within yourself without actually doing it. Like, don't deny the desire. Don't That's deny the I mean. desire. Yeah, yeah, don't deny the desire. Because you deny the desire, you're never going to find out the answer of what's going on inside of you emotionally. But if you act on the desire, you are in the potential region of harming yourself if you're acting out of harmony with love. When you're acting in harmony with love, then you are going to benefit yourself. So let's say you sit down with a guy and you say, I want to have sex with you, but I know. You can actually have these discussions, you know. You're allowed to say things like this to people. <laughs> but I do want to have sex with you, but, but I know that I don't really love you. And I've learned that actually if I enter this transaction with you, I'm going to <clears throat> feel really bad about myself afterwards. So, you know, what do you reckon, why are we attracted? You know, what's it, what, let him say what he thinks about you and let yourself feel, oh, that's what I'm attracted to. You make me feel really good. You make me feel safe. You make me feel secure. You make me feel like a woman. You make me feel whatever it is. That's why I'm attracted here. And that means underneath that, that you don't feel safe and you don't feel secure and you don't feel like a woman. Does that make sense? And are the, you can identify literally 10 or 15 emotions in one conversation like that if you let yourself deal with it that way. But you don't have to go and have sex with him to identify those emotions. Does that make sense? And by the way, while you're having sex with somebody else, you're not going to be having sex with your soulmate. Trust me. Would you, would you do that? Would you actually have sex with multiple partners? Like, you want to have your soulmate on the side, or you want to have this guy on the side, or... Do you know what I mean? In the end, you're going to attract your soulmate, which is the whole goal in the end of having a beautiful partnership. You'll attract your soulmate, and you'll have a beautiful sexual relationship with them, but not while you're having a sexual relationship with someone else at the same time. So allow yourself to work through the emotional addictions. Now, if your soulmate has passed, then you can choose, to, you know, like my feelings, personal, these are my personal feelings now, by the way, not God's feelings. God's feelings are you can have sex with anyone you want at any time you want, with whoever you want, right? You can do that. But the proviso is what I just said that if you do it out of harmony with love, you, there is going to be some soul damage. If you do it in harmony with love, you'll be fine with it. And it will help you work through things. My personal feelings are, I would rather work through things in such a way to leave me in as much of a pristine state as I possibly can, so that when I meet my soulmate, it's just going to be a beautiful relationship. That's how I feel. But you don't have to feel that way. You've got free will. <laughs>